I don't think people understand just how much open space there is in Northern New England. Well, if you've got 1.5 million acres to mess around on, so we called Elon, can we borrow a cyber truck, bring it up to Maine for a month or two, to do a kind of rural review. And Elon said, okay, we're just going 104, probably a little too fast, and give it to Patrick Feeney long-haul trucker and a carpenter. We're fixing diesel engines in the first Gulf War and just turn them loose with this thing. We're going up to meet the Irish family's big logging company. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed. Oh, I live my life in my pickup. Would you be nervous about taking something like this into the woods? I don't know that yet. Oh, this is real. Uh-oh, oh, all right. Done. Ah. They're gonna pull us out with a machine. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> to let the record reflect that we are stuck momentarily, Leave us out, and then we'll hit it hard. This is awesome. <laughs>
So would you be nervous about taking something like this into the woods? I don't know that yet. Like you roll up in this thing, what what's the reception like? Ah, uh, there'd probably be some goofing because of the looks, but uh, I don't know. I think if somebody looked it over and see some of the innovation in it, but uh, Maine is still a hard place for EV vehicles, for people to get used to that. Yeah. What road are we going? The one we did the other. No, we're gonna go right there first. We're gonna go what? see if we can make it into Charlie. Probably ought to have these on. Hey, I don't think it runs with that. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, that's what I think. It right? won't go 114 so. about the seatbelt, it'll only go 105. All right. Might want to get around. I've never done mud with this, so this is this is actually a first test tucker. I've not done mud yet. <laughs> we have uh, enough machinery to pull it out, I see. Yeah, yeah, we do. Let's try it. Let's see what it does. You might want to give us some when you get in. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, man, that was, I thought we were gonna get stuck for sure. Well, that was nothing. That was nothing at all. I'm telling you, this thing's a... I'm in a beast. Well, I'm impressed. And this is a snow machine trail. We made it. What do you think of that, Charles? I'll take mine out there. Yeah? I'll take mine out there. That's pretty impressive. It's funny, everyone thinks of Maine as just like pine trees. This is what Maine actually looks this like. This is what Maine looks it's like. It's swampy, it's yeah. wet. You know what I mean? It's a mix of everything. Yes. Can you tell us, for those who aren't familiar with the processor, that's a feller buncher that cuts down the trees and stacks them. Yeah. The processor does what? The processor will take, he's gonna deal in these bundles right here as they sit. Yep. And they're gonna take, he's then gonna decide if it's a piece of pulp if it's a piece of logs, what it is, and he's gonna cut it into. Pulp goes to the paper mill, logs go to the sawmill. Yep. This thing just rolled over yesterday? A Monday. Monday, <laughs> it's now Thursday. <laughs> and that's the man who survived. <laughs> Looking pretty happy. <laughs> but the machine doesn't look damaged from rolling. It doesn't hurt anything, no. It could it hurt him a, though. It could hurt him. Dude, where are you going on Sunday morning, do you know? Sunday morning. You're going to church <laughs> <laughs> to thank God for being alive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the fuel burn on these things? We run about 4,000 gallons a week, roughly between everything. Can you imagine running all this on electric? They're, they're working on it. I don't know how you do it, but how? Huh? Yeah, they got some hybrids. That tree's no good, so it's gonna go on pulp. So he puts it over there in a different pile. Now, tell me why that tree's no good. It's dead. Yeah. They won't take a dead log. So what direction do we think we wanna? I would veer to the right. I cleaned that, I yanked that tree out of your way a little bit. But don't worry about, there's a guy riding in the back. Oh, this is real. Uh-oh, oh, already done. Ah! Burst him back out, maybe. We're gonna have to hit it harder, but he's riding in the back. <laughs> All right, so let the record reflect that we are stuck momentarily. We're fiddling with the computer. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Jason is, but anyway. Now try Let's back. try. Uh, let's try. I wonder if sand would try anything. <laughs> try to extract. See what All right, we have. Hold on. We have. Maybe that goes up really high. We've discovered the limit of the cyber truck. Oh, we went higher. Yeah, it went higher on extract. Let's try backwards. I didn't hit it fast enough. Oh, you might make it now. Well, that feels good. Get it rocking back and forth if you can figure out how to do that. I don't know if it will let me. Well, it's a pretty good digging machine. Yeah. This is quite a test. I mean, I don't know any pickup or Jeep that would go through this. So. You don't? See, so you're, now you're defending the Cybertruck again. <laughs> he has this love affair with the Cybertruck. It's like, no matter how the Cybertruck fucks up, he's like, well, there's a good reason for that. <laughs> I'll take your truck through this. Too. <laughs> <laughs> See? Now he's stuck. Truck. Well, your truck couldn't do this. Why isn't it? I think we're just plain old fashioned stuck. I think we're gonna have to hit it harder, but I don't want him in the back if we're gonna hit it harder. Yep. <laughs> uh, hey, Jake. Yep. You might want to get out because we're gonna hit it hard. Wow, we gotta get pulled out for We gotta get pulled out for I'm glad we've reached the limit. Now we know. It's, really it's a little tough. slime. No, we're just slimy. It's just slimy tires. He get us out and then we'll hit it harder. We probably won't make it through that. 
Yeah. This thing is cool. Yeah. <laughs> you like it. They're gonna pull us out with a machine. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> what machine? The processor. Processor is gonna yard us out. It's so great. <laughs> I love it. You ready? Yep. Going back, I'm gonna get a more running start. Yeah, because I don't know if he's gonna let me go here. There you go. Oh, it won't. I got it to the floor and it won't let me. Just spinning. Yeah. That's no fun. Did it die again? No, no it's, just it's just spinning. It won't. There's no traction. No, no traction at all. It doesn't like mud. That's the tires. Is this what you thought you'd be doing today? No, it's so great. <laughs> I love it. This is awesome. <laughs> So I think it's fair to say we've assembled a jury of men who operate large machines and have spent their lives doing so. We spent a lot of time in the Cybertruck and now the verdict. I was impressed by how it went. It, uh, as far as driving the woods roads themselves, it actually handles better than our trucks. Uh, in the mud, didn't do quite as well, but it was to be expected. But overall, I was, I was very impressed. Would you by buy it. one? I think I'd buy it more of a toy than a work truck at this point. 200 miles doesn't get you to work and back. What did you think, Jason? I love it. Uh, I'm in the same I, I, same boat as Dean's at. Uh, I think that as a toy, it'd be awesome. It'd be yeah. so much fun. Two to 300 miles doesn't get me around in a day. So Patrick, I doubt, I doubt it's even worth asking the question because you're so deeply in love with the vehicle <laughs> that I found you petting it the other day and you defend it against all criticism, you make excuses for it, it'll come home drunk and you'll just pretend it's not. <laughs> but, but what do you think? But as far as driving it, it's just fun. It's like it's like hopping in your golf cart in Florida and pushing in the pedal and going. It's that simple yeah. to drive. I have a golf cart that I use every weekend yeah. at my campground. I wish it had power like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could yeah, do the thing. Oh yeah, that it's fun. It's a fun vehicle. I think if you were the carpenter that drove the hundred thousand dollar King Ranch Denali and like that kind of thing, and you worked in town, that would suffice you just fine. You get to yep. plug it in at night. You can drive easily drive two hundred miles. You could probably drive close to three hundred miles if you didn't drive like an idiot, like I do. Yeah. The only thing I don't know is I don't know how that handled the winter time up here in Maine. Thirty below. I don't know what that would do. But uh, also, I don't know how my plow would fit on it. But. Well, that's what he was saying. The plow is essential for me. I gotta have the plow. Right, yeah. so he's trying to convince Elon to let him keep it through the winter. I wanna rig up a plow on it somehow, have my welding guy fabricate some kind of <laughs> plow. It's got those tow hooks on the front. We could probably rig something up. So the Cybertruck's been here four weeks, and I'll just be totally blunt. I expected it to become a local laughing stock. I expected it to evoke hostility, if not violence from the local population. And actually, everyone kind of likes a Cybertruck. I'm not just saying that because Elon lent it to us for free. That's for real. Patrick has fallen head over heels with the machine in a way that's unnatural and creepy. Um, but everyone else likes it too. Local kids like it. And so we thought we had to bring it logging because this is you know, a wood-based economy. And the loggers liked it too. So actually, the Cybertruck like a lot of things in life, I started out wanting to hate it just on principle because it's electric and modern and it has weird lines and no continuous curves in it. The whole thing was just offensive to my aesthetic sense. But um, flying colors, absolutely flying colors.